Today's video, I have a shoe in a shaft. Why on earth have I got that? And how on earth could it make you play better golf? So I am a believer that the pelvis movement is kind of the foundation of the golf swing. If the, if the pelvis isn't moving correctly, um, I'm not saying you can't hit good shots, but um, your upper body is going to have to do different things or it's going to have to add an additional move in order to hit those good golf shots. So if you can get your pelvis working better, um, it's going to create or give you the ability to sequence the body. Um, it's going to make it far easier to hit consistent golf shots. But where I see people get so wrong in the pelvis is they don't consider its shape. So if you don't consider its shape, you come to a far too simplistic... Um, kind of theory on how to move it. And this is the way I want to show you today. You know, I've got an orange whip here. So the orange whip has just got a ball on the end. So if I'm spinning that ball, and you probably make out that it's spinning, but can you see, it's not really changing where it is in space. You see, if I go up against this wall, I can go really close, I can keep spinning it. I'm not going to touch the wall. And that's because it is purely round. And if the pelvis was like this, it would be really easy to think about how the pelvis moves. You know, we would just like literally twist through the middle. I hear a lot of people talk about that. You know, imagine there's a stake through you and you just twist. You know, I'm not arguing if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but think about the shape of the pelvis. And this is the reason I've got this new contraption, a shoe <laughs> through, a, uh, through a golf shaft. So once I start spinning the shoe, it's quite clear that it's changing space and it, it's changing within its own space. So I'm still moving it purely, but it's clearly moving. If I go up against the wall, I go really close to the wall, I start to spin, I start to hit the wall. So even though both are purely rotating, the shoe changes where it is in space because of its shape. If you think about it, the pelvis is far more like this shape than it is round. So we have to understand because the pelvis isn't round and it's this shape, when you turn it back in the backswing, so when you turn back, the right hip will look like it's going behind you. But that doesn't mean that you're moving incorrectly and it doesn't mean that you've lost your turn or it doesn't mean you're not moving and you're not rotating. You are, but if you rotate correctly, the right hip is going to move behind you. So the easiest drill to do indoors is a chair, or you could even use a wall, but we have to be careful when we're doing this chair drill. Because what I see too often is people go right up against the chair and they start working along the chair, um, especially if there's somebody that early extends, you know, moves towards the ball. But to do this effectively, I'm putting my hands in between. So I'm creating a gap. I'm getting in my posture. So now when I move back, I can move back onto the chair. And then in my transition move, I then move both cheeks onto the chair. So that's allowing the hip to actually move correctly, what that allows is you to load the hip in the backswing. If you start too close, it's going to make you want to move along the wall or along the chair. That's actually might feel good, but it's not going to let you load your hip. So you're, you're going to feel a little compromised when you go into your downswing. Plus, if, we're, if we've gone a bit forward, we might even move forward again. So that's why we have to start with a little gap. So the chair, or if you're using a wall, yes, very simple to incorporate into loading in the backswing, but the chair can get in the way if we're going to make a correct movement in the downswing. So what I will do with the chair, if I'm working on downswing, is I'm going to go like halfway, so the left hand side of my body is, is, not, in, is not impeded by the chair. What that allows me to do is I can load back, I can still move into the chair in transition, but then I can turn around the chair 
into my downswing and into my follow through. Because think about it, if the chair is completely in the way, I get here, and then as soon as I want to deliver that club, I then have to extend to try and make that movement feel comfortable. So this works great if, you, if you're using a wall, you know, get right onto the corner, so I'm, I'm into the corner of the wall, so it gives me a chance to turn around. Um, the chair drill, and I bet you've seen loads of people using a chair, um, it's, it's not a new one, I've not the inventor of using a wall or using a chair, but please make sure in the backswing there's that little bit of a gap that allows you to turn into the chair or into the wall so that gives you the chance to feel the loading you then move in transition so we feel like the, our backside gets back onto either the chair or the wall but then for the downswing we then turn around the corner you know really simple um, once you start to do this a few times, if, again, especially if you're someone who struggles to load the hip in the backswing, you know, you'll do it a few times and you should get a light bulb moment and go, wow, this is what I need. If it feels uncomfortable, maybe you're very tight in your pelvis and you need to do some stretching or mobility um, exercises to actually allow the movement to occur. But do this first and kind of see how you get on. Um, get some comments down below if you've got any other questions regarding how the, the pelvis moves or just any other um, indoor swing questions. Um, please get them in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And I hope to catch you soon.